Hi everyone, it's Becky here. Welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. And today's video is a continuation of my evening at Brunswick Point in the southern part of Vancouver. Here I am sitting at a bench, enjoying the serenity of seeing the sun going slowly down towards the horizon. And I'm going to capture this expansive view of this nature landscape on this uh, two-page spread, a little panorama. So I'm beginning to identify the horizon line, and I wanted to put it a little bit lower from the absolute middle, all right? So it looks more interesting when we are placing the horizon a little lower or a little higher from the uh, dead middle of a page. And now above the horizon, I am drawing these lovely curves of the mountains in the distance and then this middle ground tree over here okay and um, expand it a little bit more towards the right some more trees and bushes yeah just to establish a basic sense of land and perspective some more foliage outlines around the middle ground foliage texture inside the contour outlines um, the branches and twigs the grassy areas. So for each stroke drawing these grass blades, I'm pushing my pen from the bottom and swipe it upwards to get the grass blades done. And then this line is very important, slanting downwards towards uh, the right, establish a really nice sense of space and perspective. And now I am using very solid uh, dark lines to draw these wooden stumps around the shallow area of the water. Yeah, so they are kind of like randomly placed, not sure why they're there, partially in water. And continuing the horizon line and this uh, middle ground area with more grassy texture. So within about five minutes, I have the, uh, the perspective of this whole landscape um, laid out with the horizon line and the division of the water body and the grassland. Now it's time to move on to the uh, details for the different areas of this landscape, the sky, water body, and grassland. And now, yeah, so it takes a lot of patience to get these grass blades done for the foreground area and also driftwoods laying in between the grass and also these wild uh, flowers with large leaves swaying in the wind. So when you're sketching in nature, um, capturing the different species of grass, flowers, and other kinds of plants, try to identify their essence. Uh, these ones, I'm not sure what they're called, but they have a really uh, long stalks and um, leaves on both sides of the stalks. And also in between, it's kind of like dramatic with these driftwoods uh, laying in between another kind of uh, grass, very likely like reeds um, in the middle ground. So I'm only drawing um, the lines and shapes and forms that are really prominent to me and not trying to draw every single blade of grass or leaf that's out there, which could take 10 hours to do. I'm just summarizing uh, the forms that I feel and not just copy what's in front. I might be missing some clusters of grass or these wild flowers and that's okay. I'm trying to capture um, the overall feel of this landscape very rapidly in under one hour. And one of the things about drawing in nature that I love the most is that we don't have to keep all of these forms so tightly connected when drawing buildings. And you can see there are a lot of gaps between the grass and the leaves here in the middle and the foreground. Now I'm drawing this uh, foreground bare branch tree here on the right hand side, which makes this uh, sketch look even more compelling. Yeah, and also I'm switching to a, uh, a brush pen just so it's easier to get the thick lines done and also faster. Uh, this tree is looking very much like a silhouette in this lighting condition, which is really nice. It's great to have, you know, some silhouette shapes in a sketch. And also switching back to my uh, regular fine liner pen to get these thin twigs done, playing with different line weight and thicknesses, adding some more loose grassy texture here for the bottom right, 
um, some more wooden stumps around the shallow part of the water. And the sky is going to be very simple. I'm going to use paint to uh, depict the charm. Just a circle for the setting sun there. And that's it. Oh, and before moving on to painting watercolors, I'm going to add these super gentle pressured lines um, for the uh, rippled water. So sitting and sketching nature is a wonderful way to kind of disconnect from the hurried and stressful world and just be in the embrace of the universe. I'm going to begin painting the sky area, which is changing like every few seconds. So I'm going to begin wetting the whole sky area with my large tip pobine water brush, ready for uh, really amazing wet onto wet techniques of several different colors. Okay, so now I'm going to begin with the warm colors like the yellows and oranges. This yellow circling around the setting sun, spreading out a little bit. So it's a mellow yellow um, in horizontal brush strokes for the middle part of the sky. Yeah, so I don't want to over exaggerate uh, the colors of the evening sky. The yellow is actually really mellow uh, right now in this situation compared to some other tropical ones and uh, grabbing some orange, uh, blend it with the uh, cadmium yellow. Yeah, so I was using cadmium yellow and also now a bit of orange. Keep diluting that orange yellow as well to create um, several different levels of tints using water. Yeah, and keeping my brush strokes always in long horizontal brush strokes. And just let nature, like gravity, do the work to pull these values together. Now it's time for the cold colors of blues. Um, this is very much a, a cerulean blue for the bottom part of the sky. And cleaning my brush, adding some more retouches of yellow for the top. Now I want heavier uh, values of yellow oranges. So yeah, this layer I'm adding on right now is yellow orange um, containing a little, a little less water around the sun. So I'm trying to paint uh, not a static moment, like painting from photographs. Um, I love painting from real life observations because um, it's just such a really magical and uplifting experience trying to capture more than one moment. Now I'm going to let the sky area to, uh, to dry up a little bit, not completely dried before adding some uh, dark blue and purple clouds because right now it's too wet to add on those clouds. Now I'm, I'm ready to paint the uh, reflection on the surface of the water. The yellow orange is pretty strong. Yeah, just kind of below the setting sun. Again, playing with water control. So we have uh, different tints of yellow oranges. And yeah, just keep spreading this super warm and soothing color of the sunset. Now cleaning my brush and grabbing some fresh cerulean blue for uh, the area right below the horizon. And also I'm letting the blue to blend a bit with the yellow to form turquoise. So we can always mix new colors on paper like this, all right, wet onto wet. And using thin brush strokes to depict the uh, rippled water feel. And oh wow, I just love the uh, turquoise colors emerging from the blending of blue and the yellow. So a lot of times I just let go. I don't control too much of how the watercolor is working itself on the surface of the paper. And it's preserving uh, the middle part of the water uh, for the golden shine of the reflection from the sunset. Now the uh, sky area is dried up a little bit. This is wet onto moist. As you can see, it's kind of different from wet onto wet. So the brush stroke and the color is fading out just a little bit, but not too much as wet onto wet. So this is all about water control and know the right time to put on this orange. Now adding a bit of a mix of cobalt blue and cerulean for the distance uh, mountain ranges. Yeah, a little stronger for the ones here um, in the front row. All right, and just let the blooming go. It's okay to have a little bit blooming of that blue going over into the sky, create a kind of nice magical feel. 
And now keep playing with wet onto moist, just dilute it. A uh, mix of cobalt blue and a little bit of cerulean, again using very long and confident brush strokes. And now let's take a quick break at the evening sky right now. It has more colors of orange and orange red now. I love observing the evolution of a um, sunset sky and recording it. All right, yeah, it's more than just one fixed moment captured by the camera. This is captured by a human being. And now some more diluted um, cobalt blue, mix a little bit of um, royal purple into it for these dark colored clouds. So when painting an evening sky like this, you have to um, be really bold and not worry about making mistakes or making a mess. Just let go and these colors are gonna fade out a little bit. When you're putting a strong colored brush stroke on uh, wet onto moist or wet onto wet, it looks too strong in the beginning. But after a few minutes, it's gonna fade out a little bit and not looking way too strong. Still having a really nice contrast. Yep, just let the blooming go and keep going with more brush strokes because the sky colors are changing so fast. Now, uh, the sun is getting lower toward the horizon. Uh, the change is even more rapid. Yeah, for those evening clouds, I played with cobalt blue and royal purple and a little bit of magenta for some pinkish purple feel up there. Now the sky is done. So really know the right time to stop and uh, not meddling around instead. Now it's time to move on to the grassland. So I just wetted the, uh, the grassland area with clear water, putting on these um, mid-tones of greens. So this is a mix of viridian green with lime green. Again, always playing with water control. So the value is a little different from brush stroke to brush stroke. And also spreading in a really bold way using quick punches of these different kinds of greens. And also mixing a little bit of yellow ochre sometimes. Yeah, this is just the first layer. Uh, no need for blending with other types of colors, just to keep it clean and fresh. Okay, and now I feel like spreading a little bit more uh, pure yellow ochre here and there. Um, those areas are illuminated by the setting sun. So this is very much about painting with our sensations rather than you know thinking about what is right, what is wrong. Uh, there's no right or wrong in this painting process. So if 100 different artists are painting the scenery together, sitting side by side, they're going to come up with 100 different results of color choices, um, compositions, uh, brush strokes. And now I am ready to grab a little bit of um, kind of leftover gray with a um, mix of cobalt blue, a little bit of uh, burnt sienna, and a tiny bit of purple just using very quick dashing brush strokes to color these almost silhouette shapes of the driftwoods hiding in between the grass. And now I see some streaks of red emerging in the middle part of the sky. So just grabbing some cherry red, or you can use magenta and um, wet onto moist because the air is very chilly. It's taking a very, very long time for watercolors to dry. And yeah, just, just added some leftover gray for the uh, wood floating in the uh, shallow water area down there and some more stronger uh, blues for this mountain here in the front row of all others. And also uh, keeping that gap unpainted to show the um, luminosity of the sun shining down, interrupting uh, the form of the mountain there right below the setting sun and using thin brush strokes to paint the uh, rippled water. This is very much wet onto moist, so my thin brush strokes are not uh, faded out. So for these rippled marks, it's a mix of cobalt blue and a little bit of royal purple, diluted a little bit so these brush strokes uh, don't look, look way too harsh. All right, and just keep spreading it around the surface of the water using these long strands of brush strokes. Uh, the shadow of the mountain over here using a thick brush stroke and thinner ones uh, for most part of the water body here. So uh, the sun is getting super close to the horizon. These foreground elements are getting 
uh, a much darker tone compared to like twenty minutes before. So now I am adding some darker values of greens by mixing verdant green with a little bit of burnt sienna. So burnt sienna can um, always uh, make uh, a green having a darker shade. And using these choppy, relaxing organic brush strokes to get the loose foliage texture done here and there, preserving some areas untouched for some highlights. So when painting grassland, you can use little dots of pretty concentrated green shades for higher contrast and also quick dashes, um, thin brush strokes of uh, broken segments. Yeah, for the foreground here, I want it to look heavier. So more burnt sienna mix in for these shaded area in between the clusters of grass. And again, don't worry about making a mess. Just uh, follow your, your intuition of your impression of what you see. Uh, more than just what you see, it has to be what you feel as well in front of you the rhythm of nature, that nothing looks perfect, but everything is beautiful. And the sense of aerial perspective for those mountains in the distance are very important. So I'm adding some darker values of blue for the front row mountains over here. So there's a transition of various tones or values of blue. So in general, the mountains uh, in the front row are of a much darker blue compared to those misty, foggy looking ones in the very back. And now adding some quick shade, shaded areas in between these grass blades using uh, vertical brush marks, skipping in between, a little bit rendering over here. And now is, is the uh, final polishing stage of this uh, painting. Again, um, my goal is to add these darker values of greens, especially on the bottom part of the grassland and also using a less watery brush or water brush in this case. And these little red wildflowers there in the middle ground are actually adding more interest and echoes with the sunset colors. And just last bits of tiny, almost invisible brush strokes here and there. Oh yeah, I think I'm almost ready to call it done. Here it is. So thank you so much for watching this video, everyone. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates for more lovely adventures of me sketching around the city and traveling elsewhere. And I will see you again very soon next time with more landscapes and little cityscapes. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.